Hi, I'm G. Welcome back to my art channel. Inktober is coming up pretty soon and sidestepping any controversy that's going on at the moment. Uh, if you're thinking of taking part, I thought I would share with you five of my top tips for having a successful Inktober. So first up, what is Inktober? Well, Inktober is a drawing challenge that was started by Jake Parker in about 2009. And he started it um, to kind of serve his own needs, if you will, to try and get better at using inks. So it was a kind of a growth exercise for him. And the idea is that every single day during October, you do an ink drawing. So 31 drawings over 31 days. He creates a prompt list, which is kind of like a, a useful list of starting points that you can use. And there's one for absolutely every single day of the month. Or you can do your own and you can create your own prompts and your own prompt list and go well off the beaten track. Once you've done the drawing, then all you have to do is post it to social media of your choice, Instagram, Twitter, wherever, and just make sure that you include the hashtags Inktober, Inktober 2020, and a whole raft of other um, hashtags that will get you noticed. But a daily drawing challenge can be difficult. So here are my top tips so that you can have a successful drawing challenge. And I'm starting with tip number one get the prompt list early. Okay, the prompt list comes out sometime in September, um, early September, so almost a month in advance. So get that list of prompts if you're gonna use the prompts and start working through every single one. Either start with day one or go to whichever of the prompts you think, yeah, that's gonna give me the most ideas this time. And just work through each one of them, doing some sketches, doing some drawings, getting something drawn out ahead of time. Um, and even inked ahead of time. I know some people purists might be like, whoa, whoa, whoa you can't do that. You've got to do it on the day. We well, have to post it on the day. <laughs> Give yourself a little bit of a, a head start and get some of those drawings done in advance. I did this in 2019. So I got the prompt list early and I started sketching out ideas early. I didn't ink them until the actual days, but I started that list early. So I felt as though I was ahead of the game already. Um, what I used to do was just get the prompt list at the end of uh, September and then I'd be like on October the 1st, bang, drawing my first one. And I really found it difficult and pressured to try and stay ahead of everything. This approach also allows you to get more research for some of those ideas that are a little bit more involved and you're going to need uh, a few more Google images or um, any other search engine images to help you figure out how exactly you're going to sort of bring your idea together. So it gives you that little bit of extra time. Doing all of that on the day can be a bit of a nightmare. You know, if you've got a job and you're doing this as, as a kind of like a, a hobby thing as well, it's difficult to fit it all in. So any way that you can create a little bit more time for yourself is a really good idea. I usually maybe do a, two or three simple thumbnails for each idea. Just give me an idea of the layout and perhaps some little ideas between um, contrast, light and dark, any kind of details that I'm going to be using. So now we're on to tip number two. And my advice here is to try and work small. Um, I usually work around a kind of A6 size um, or more usually a nine centimeter by nine centimeter box that I'll draw out in my sketchbook at a time. And I try and fill that space. And knowing that I don't have to do an A5 sketch every day or even an A4 sketch every day is really good for me because um, if I thought I was gonna have to do those sketches, I'd kind of shut down probably and you know fail after the first week at doing the challenge, you know. Um, so I, I'm always trying to give myself a bit of a head start, like I say, and also make it not an onerous task for me. And if I'm definitely going to do a drawing every day, I've got to try and weigh everything in my favor. And my way of doing that is to work small. Now, you might not want to work small. I totally understand that. But uh, it was definitely a method that I found has worked for me over the last couple of years, that nine centre by nine centimetre box, because most of the time I am sharing to Instagram, first of all, and the kind of box format that you see on the screen, it works really, really well with that. Yes, it does have drawbacks. Working in such a small sized area like that means that you can't really add maybe as much detail that you would like to do. And plus, if you're doing full length portraits or, or even just regular portraits, it can be difficult to fit stuff into a format of a, a square box. So for me, it means that I'm doing a smaller drawing every single day. And that means that I feel as though I've got more chance of completing it every single day. Tip number three is to try and stay either ahead or level with every single challenge every single day. Basically, you're trying really hard not to fall behind with this, because if you do, then you're coming to each sketch each day and thinking, well, you know, I've got to do yesterday's sketch, or I've got to do the one that I did the day before, maybe you're two or three days behind, it can get overwhelming, and then you can just say, oh, that's it, I've had enough of this, I'm just gonna chuck it, I'm not gonna bother. And you kind of want to avoid that if you can. So um, my idea here is stay ahead and stay level. So 
I do a sketch even when I don't feel like doing one. You know, you're having a bad day, you're tired, you oh, I've got to do an Inktober sketch. Instead of thinking, I've got to, just say, yeah, I'm going to. Because remember, the whole point of this exercise was a kind of a growth and practice exercise when it first was started. The idea that you would have a go with ink and you would explore and experiment and build your ink skills. And not everything that you draw every single day is going to be awesome and a masterpiece and the best piece of work that you had in your head. It isn't for anybody. I mean, I can count quite a few times I've done an Inktober sketch and thought, mm, that's a bit ropey afterwards. But it's done. And you did learn something from it. So my advice would be just do a sketch every single day, even if it's not the best that you can do. And if you're looking at something thinking, oh, I really like that idea and I wish I could have done a better job with it, then fine, just do it for the day in October. And then when October is over, revisit that sketch, redo it, give it all the whistles and bells and, and special praise and detail that you want to do. You know, treat it as a kind of a, a preliminary sketch, a rough sketch, before you go and do a better piece in November. And that, point number three, leads me quite nicely into point number four. Okay, so tip number four, and this might upset the purists out there, but do more sketches on the days that you feel more creative. For example, if you finish a sketch early one day, or perhaps it was a simpler idea, a simpler sketch, and it just didn't take you so long, then you're still in that creative flow. So instead of just stopping and saying, I've done my Inktober sketch for the day, right, I'm going to watch TV. Um, you know, break out a bit of paper and start one of the other ideas. If you're just sketching it out in pencil, or if you've got the pencil idea already, see point number one, and um, you're deciding you're going to actually do it that day, then do it. Don't worry about this. You've got to do the sketch on the day business. No, you don't have to think about it like that. You can approach it in your way. And I would totally advise it if you find on a day you've got more time and you're feeling really creative on those days, then do more than one sketch. Do two, do three. Imagine how much more ahead of the game you get when you do that. And also then if you have a bad day tomorrow, it doesn't matter so much because you did the prep today or the other day when you felt kind of creative. And don't worry about doing them in sequence as well. You know, you could do day 15 just because you really, really love the idea. If you finish day eight early, you could start sketching out day 15 then. It's absolutely fine. Don't worry about the other people who are being totally purist about this. Okay, so we're down to my last tip, and this is tip number five. And this is, in my view, vary your ink media. Now, most of the other tips that I've done have all been about, you know, time management, planning, if you will, and staying, as I put it, ahead of the game. But this is also, and I've stated this before, a growth kind of challenge, a development challenge, developing your inking skills. So, you know, my advice would be don't just stick to a fine line pen all month long just because you feel comfortable with them. Try different ink media. Last year, I tried to use um, fountain pens with water. I used fine line pens. I used a brush pen that I absolutely love using. And, um, you know, I even dipped my toe into a dip pen as well, <laughs> as it were. Um, you know, so I tried different ink media and I would totally advise that you do the same. It's, it's brilliant to be really good with one particular ink instrument, but it's even better if you've got more tools at your disposal and more media at your disposal. I know you might be watching this now and thinking, but all your other advice was stay ahead of the game and don't fall behind. And if I start using all these different media, then that's going to take me longer and it's not going to be so good. And, you know, I'm probably going to quit. Well, I would hope that you wouldn't feel that way. I really would. And I would totally advise that you um, try a bunch of different ink media over the month. You know, try it out, see how it goes. What's the worst that can happen? Um, but if you do feel, no, I love my brush pen. I got to do everything with a brush pen. Then go right ahead, do your thing, be you. And just enjoy the month in that respect. So those are my five top tips for having a successful Inktober. But you might still be sitting there unconvinced. Should I do Inktober? Um, well, I think it's an absolutely brilliant um, challenge and it is a brilliant chance over the course of a month to produce lots of sketches in lots of ink media and so to learn some new skills and new approaches that maybe you didn't have before. It's also a chance to unlock that daily creativity, which is can be a bit of a, a kind of like um, a holy grail or, or something unobtainable a little bit. You know, some of us never have a chance to draw every single day and Inktober can be that for you. I felt more part of a art community the very first time I did Inktober because you're sharing a piece of work every single day with a prompt and thousands, hundreds, perhaps even millions of other people around the world are doing that too. They kind of log in and they check out what you're doing and you can see what they're doing. You can see how somebody else approached the idea of bait 
or dizzy or rain or whatever the prompt was that day and you can be like oh that was really cool why didn't I think of that or mine stacks out pretty good against that you know um, so you can approach things in that way and you really feel a part of something people comment on your work and lots of people check in and are like oh I like what you did there or oh did you think of doing it this way and stuff like that so I think it was the first time on Instagram I really felt a part of an art community. So there's that reason for doing it. It can be a tremendously good motivator. And um, plus you get some lovely comments that can really, really keep you going creatively. And if you hashtag carefully using the prompts as well as Inktober, you'll get a whole bunch of new people following you, checking out your work, uh, maybe even some bots too, you know, who could always do with a few bots watching you, liking your work for no reason at all. And it was productive. You know, I produced 31 sketches over 31 days. I mean, I can usually never say that I'm that creative doing a sketch every single day. So I love the fact that it motivated me to do that. And I look back on each of my sketchbooks where I did complete the challenge and do 31 days. You know, really, I'm proud that it was almost like an art marathon. And I managed to stick with it for the whole duration and produce one of those sketches every single day. So those are my top five tips for having a successful Inktober. If you can think of any tips that will be helpful, please leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Thanks for watching.